All right, now it's time to assemble the X carriage. So the X carriage is going to sit across the front of your printer bot like this, and it's going to move the print plate in the X direction. So by the end, it's going to move this guy like that. But we've got a few steps to get there. Firstly, the equipment we're going to need, we're going to need the aluminium print plate. We're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven pieces, which were probably all connected in your kit. This tiny little X one here is the most, is the easiest to lose. And then you'll have three X pieces with the letter R on them for the right hand side. And an almost identical set of three X pieces with the letter L for the other side. So I collect those pieces of wood, separate them, smooth them file the edges off of the sandpaper, make them nice, and then you'll need to collect some parts. You will need one of the GT2 toothed belts. You'll need two of the short rods, short smooth rods, and you will need two M3 by 20 bolts with matching nuts. Do -do. Four M3 by 16 bolts on their own for the print bed. And you'll also need another four M3 by 16 bolts with nuts to mount the ends and two M3 by 10 screw bolts on their own. So in total, that's two M3 by 10 bolts, do, 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 do. eight M3 by 16 bolts, two M3 by 20 bolts and six nuts. Once we've got those all collected, it's time to start assembling this guy. All right, the first step here is to route the GT2 belt. So take your printer bot base and making sure the toothed side points inwards, you need to get this belt to go along this bearing, down around the motor, back up the other side and onto this bearing. So, start by poking it down once down the left hand side of the ge toothed gear pulley at the bottom. And assuming that it went down the right side, you should be able to turn it, twist it around on the bottom and carefully feed it back up the other side. If everything works out, then you should have the toothed side of the belt up. And by gently pulling left and right, you should see the pulley rotating underneath. If you've done this, it's a great success. And this is the belt that's going to control your x-axis. What we need to add to one end of that belt is the tiny little wooden x piece. So the way you do that is you thread the belt through one side, through the bottom of this piece. then back through the top and making sure you've got only a tiny small amount of overlap, so about 10 or 15 millimeters. Join the teeth so that they lock into each other and then with them joined and locked into each other, wrap a zip tie around there to make sure the belt can't escape. So a zip tie just around the belt itself holding the two layers of the belt together. Now this zip tie doesn't have to be the strongest one in the world, but it does have to keep this belt tight. So I'm using pliers to make sure the zip tie stays flat like the belt. And once it's done, cut the excess off the zip tie. And there you have it, that's one end of our belt. The other end's gonna require a little more work and we'll get to that soon. Put this guy aside, and then carefully, while twisting, insert the two linear rods into these bearings. And this is gonna be their home for the rest of this printer's life. They should feel smooth, and you, you can probably hear the bearings rolling away in there.
Okay, with that done, it's now time to move on to these wooden pieces. Make two piles to the left, and a, a pile for the left pieces, which we'll put on the left, and a pile for the right pieces that we'll put on the right. Now, grab the X piece with the small slots and the X piece with the large slots. I'll line these two up on top of each other. So this center hole here should line up perfectly. And then flip them over. And while pressing them together, we're going to drive an M3 by 10 bolt into this hole from the bottom. So grab an Allen key. And then start inserting this bolt. So a drop of oil on this bolt will help it enormously. You'll be surprised how much it helps. Keep winding till the bolt is home, and then if there's any gap between these two, you can see on mine, there's actually a tiny little gap in there. If there's any gap, then rotate the top piece down to take that gap out. So basically screw the top piece on. You should end up with the two pieces flush, touching perfectly. Now because this is the right side. We don't have to do anything apart from put that bolt flat. We then simply add this piece to the back here. And secure it using two of the M3 by 16 bolts with nuts. guy done he's gonna sit on this end when he's finished that guy done it's time to move on to the left hand side and it's basically the same process again we sandwich these together and starting on the bottom piece which is the piece that has these holes we're gonna drive an m3 by 10 bolt in now I'm gonna get ahead of the game and pre-oil this guy because I know it's gonna be a pain This one's a little different. This one we wind all the way in until it touches. And then we have to wind it out one and a half full turns. Again, if there's a gap, wind this guy in till there's no gap. And make sure that you've got, you should be able to get your f fingernail underneath that bolt head. The reason that guy's going to hang low is because when we mount him on this side, it actually has to come in and touch this end stop. And we don't want to risk it missing the end stop because that will mean your printer will break. With that done, we then mount this guy. And secure it using two M3 by 16s with nuts. Now, 
you've got your left and your right end to the print bed. It's time to get the actual printer in here and four zip ties. So what you have to do now is get the rods at an even length and then sitting this piece on top of the rods, you'll need to zip tie it to the rod. So it's probably easiest to start the zip tie out here on its own. Be careful not to tighten them too much. Good and ready. We'll start the second one as well. Once they're like that, carefully hook the zip ties under the rod. Then gently tighten the zip tie down. And do the same for the other one. So you have to make sure the zip ties will end up flush below this wood as well. So if there's any chance the zip ties are higher than this wooden plate, you need to remove them and start again. <sighs> Once they're tightened, grab your pliers to make sure they get an extra little bit of tightening without twisting the wood, which might mean we have to do it from this angle. Check with your finger if you can feel the zip ties at all, they're too high. And you're going to have to grab your Stanley knife and cut them down to size. So mine is sticking up a little bit, so I need the Stanley knife. And I'm just going to take the tops off those tails so that they'll fit underneath the printer. At this point, it's a really, really good idea to check that when this slides through, you should hear a click as it touches this end stop. If it's not clicking, then you're going to have to adjust the bolt underneath here to make sure that the bolt doesn't hit the frame. If it's, if it's too long, it'll hit the frame. If it's too short, it might miss this guy. So if they're both connecting perfectly, it's time to move on to the other end and add this guy. Using the same process. So we start the zip ties. Then we carefully place the zip ties under the rods with the zip ties under the rods with the wood on top of the rod and start filling them up. can't feel those so it's perfect. With that done it's now time to put the print bed on. So pick the best side. If one side scratched use the other but be careful when you line the print bed up with the holes it actually has a forwards and a backwards. You can see how mine's hanging over the front here. If I rotate it 180 degrees it now lines up flush with the front. So if yours isn't lining up flush at the front rotate it and make sure it's flush. Then it's time to wind some bolts in. So put a drop of oil in each of these holes. You're going to need it because these bolts are very stiff. Put your print bed on, making sure that the bolt holes line up in the corners and it's flush with the front of your printer. Then grab your four M3 by 16 bolts, add a drop of oil to each, then get them started. They're going to be quite stiff because they're cutting through wood and making their own hole. So it might take you some time, but once all four are started, you can then get your Allen key and, and start winding them in.
one thing left to do to sort this belt out. So, to sort this belt out, the first step is turn the print around so you guys can see what's going on. So, this side is going to be our tensioner. So, we're going to use the two M3 by 20 bolts, which are the nice long ones, and the two nuts. And they go through this hole, and then they mount this block. And you're going to do these nuts up till the nuts are just held in place. So, only a little bit frustrating to do, but you can do them up till the bolt just goes through the nut and no more. And the reason we do this is because these are going to be our tensioners. So, when the belt, after printing for a while, the belt might get loose, we're going to use these two bolts to easily tension up this belt. So you can see here we've got about 10 millimeters of extra tension we can put on the belt if we need simply by winding those in. So once these two are in and just started we then need to pull the belt tight. You can see if you pull the belt it actually drives the print bed across. Pull the belt then feed it through the left hand through the bottom hole here on the left back through the top and then you're going to have to tighten this as well as you can and secure it with a zip tie so it's not going to end up perfectly tight but should end up tight enough once again make sure that the belt teeth line up against each other and then we're going to put a zip tie around the whole lot to keep it in place. And you'll probably notice that your belt's not quite as tight as you'd like. And that's exactly what these two up here are for. So carefully wind them in just a tiny bit. Keeping them even. And... You don't, the belt doesn't need to be like a guitar string, it just needs to be not loose. So as soon as the belt's not loose, that's tight enough. It's better to be under tight than over tight. By far on this part of the project. And that's it. You now have a completed X-axis. It moves this way, you should hear a click. If you don't hear the click, it probably means your zip tie is in the way. So, if your zip tie is loose enough, rotate it over. If your zip tie is not loose enough, you're going to have to put it loose enough your tensioner. You never want to do this while the belt's tensioned. And check both your zip ties should have their fat ends inside towards the inner of the print bed if they're hanging out the top they're going to cause issues so rather than lose your rather than lose your tuning here the easiest way is to add a new zip tie next to the old one first in the right direction so with the fat end inside and up right out of the way secure that zip tie in and then carefully cut the old zip tie off using your side cutters being careful not to cut the belt Until the belt's tight and then this time you should hear a nice if you don't hear that end stop going off you need to check this zip tie but if your print bed touches 
that end stop and makes a nice clicking noise, it's a great success.